remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Football time here on America's Evil Genius. Yes, America's Evil Genius. Travis Cook back with you once again. Be decked out in the Kansas City Chiefs gear because today we're going to talk a little bit about the National Football League, America's favorite sport. And we bring up the NFL today because uh, over the last few days, the last week or so, there have been rumblings, there have been reports that the NFL is considering implementing a rule that would penalize a player, penalize a team 15 yards for using the N-word in the middle of play. Okay, that seems a little bit odd, but, uh, you know, it's the NFL. They, they have their league. They can make whatever rules they want. I, I don't really care if they make the rule or not. And, and granted, I think the rule's a little ridiculous. I think it's a little over the top if they end up doing it. But you know what? The NFL has a lot of rules I feel that way about. A lot of the, the rules they have that prohibit self-expression, things like you can only do certain types of celebrations, but you can't do other types of celebrations, and you can't have uh, you can't have a team celebration, and you can't use props in your celebrations, or you can't do the throat slash gesture. When did that become offensive anyway? Well, anyway, they made a rule that you couldn't do that, right? So there's all kinds of quirky little rules about self-expression they don't allow. You can't wear, you know, certain things with words on them. It's, it's, it's a whole litany of things that uh, seem to be like a helicopter parent, but that's what the NFL chooses to do. So there's a lot of things like that I disagree with, and, and, and I guess this rule would be one of those things. But the politically correct have evidently started to have some sort of influence with the National Football League. And so now we're all concerned about concussions and we're concerned about locker room behavior. And we're concerned with putting an effeminate Bruno Mars on the stage of the halftime show to placate all the people who aren't heterosexual manly males uh, during the Super Bowl. So I guess that's the direction we're going. But I just wonder if this rule does end up going into place. I wonder if the National Football League isn't going to run into an unintended consequence of this. I think there's something that's going to happen that they may not be prepared for. You see, everybody hates the idea of racism in football or anywhere else. Hey, I hate that idea too. So, and I'm sure that this is supposed to, to be aimed at curbing racial prejudice and, and those type of high-minded things. But I guarantee you that if this rule is implemented, you will never see a white player flagged 15 yards for uh, naughty language of the ethnic variety. I guarantee you won't see that. Now, is that because I don't think the officials would throw a flag on a white person for doing it? No, just the opposite. I think they'll be told by the league office, you keep an eye on them and you make sure if anybody doesn't that, that they get nailed. No, no, I don't think that at all. Instead, I don't think a white person, a white player will get flagged for this penalty because I doubt there's very much, if any, of that behavior happening from the white players to begin with. I think most of the use of the N-word, not only in a football field, but in society, happens from African-Americans speaking to other African-Americans. In fact, there have been athletes this week that said, hey, this really doesn't happen in terms of whites saying the word to blacks. It really doesn't happen. So for better or worse, whites are used to walking on eggshells around African Americans anyway in terms of their language, so I don't really see this being a problem. I think the problem you're going to see is that everybody who gets flagged for this penalty will be an African American. Now, how is that going to look in terms of racial justice and so forth, in terms of political correctness? What is it going to say when everybody you see flagged for this penalty is a minority? I'm not sure that's the type of story the NFL wants to put out there. I don't know what you do in that case. I don't know if you add a whole other list of words to it that are prohibited in, in the hopes that you get other people flagged for penalties. Or I don't know if you just say maybe this is a bad idea and we'll keep it as a rule, but we just won't really call it unless it's egregious. Maybe that's what you do. But I think they're, they're, running it, they're going to be running into a situation because there's going to be a lot of attention to this rule if it comes about. I mean, it's, this isn't some obscure rule like, well, if your number's in the 50s or 60s, you have to report before you can catch a pass. No, not one of those rules. This is going to be talked about in the media, on all the sports shows, all the news shows. It's going to have a lot of crossover, uh, crossover talk and crossover attention. So people are going to notice that 
No white guy is ever going to be called for this. I mean, how can I be so sure? Hey, I, I got to tell you, of the very few white people I've known who have ever used that word, and it's a pretty small number, absolutely none of them, no matter how racist they might be, would ever have the guts to say it in front of big black men playing football. Nobody would be that stupid. They're not going to do it. Maybe they say it around the buddies. Maybe they say it in a comfortable environment. But they would never say it in a mixed environment like that. So you're not going to see a white guy penalized for this. You're going to see mostly my, all minorities penalized for it. What kind of story is that going to tell? Wow. But certainly they can do what they want. But in closing, I, I, I do want to make one final comment on the N-word itself. And it's not a word that I choose to use. I don't, I don't prefer to use it. But people are going to say what they're going to say. But I noticed last night on ESPN there was a little uh, one hour long outside the line special on the N-word in celebration of Black History Month. Really? Is that what Black History Month means? Is talking about the N-word? Really? That's, that's what it boils down to? Oh well. They did this, this show on it and you know they had these uh, old school players and, and people from the 50s and 60s talking about how disgusting the word is to them and, and that's fine. It's their right. But you saw these younger uh, players, like high school, junior high players, talking about how the word has a very different meaning for them, that it's almost like a term of endearment. And that, that might be hard for some people of an older generation, maybe even including me, to, to thoroughly understand, but I think it says something. You know, the, these kids were talking about how, oh, if I say my, mm, it's a term of endearment, term of affection. And, and even though certain people can say it and certain people can't, and maybe that's not fair, but we are where we are in society. It is seen as not as harmful of a word in certain contexts. And then you would, then the ESPN would switch back to some older player. I think uh, me and Joe Green was on there and a few others that would very sternly talk into the camera and talk about what that word really means and, and how it goes back to whites using that word against blacks in the days of segregation and slavery and all of this. And it struck me that, okay, that, that probably is true. I don't doubt it. That at one time, the word probably meant that. But to these younger people, the word no longer means that. They're aware of the history. They know what happened. But to them, they hear the word, and it does not bring to mind the visual of a white man saying it to someone who's in the wrong seat of the bus or someone who has just bought a slave or anything like that. They're not seeing that at all because they haven't lived in that world. They haven't lived in that life. And it strikes me that that says something very positive about where our nation is and where our nation has come in terms of racial relations. Yeah, I know that for people who are in their 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s today, that word will bring to mind a lot of bad stuff from the 40s and 50s and 60s. But African American young people, young people of every ethnicity, have never lived in that world. How great is that? How great is that that they never had to go through what you went through? I, I think that says so much about us. That a word like that can no longer have the meaning that it used to. I think of it like, like Halloween. I remember when I was a kid, every once in a while you'd go into a church and you'd hear someone do a sermon or, or give a, a talk on the evils of Halloween. How it was originally a holiday that was used to celebrate pagan religion or Satanism or whatever. I, I forget the specifics of it, but that it has its roots in that. And I always thought that was ridiculous, not because it didn't happen, but because today in 2014, if you take your little kid out to celebrate Halloween, he's not out there to celebrate paganism or Satanism. No, he wants to dress up in a silly costume and get candy. Great, we've evolved. We took something that was bad at one time and made it something fun something acceptable i think that says a lot about us and i think that the attitudes that those kids have shown towards that word says something very positive about where we've come as a society in terms of racial animus it's not perfect but my god is it better than it used to be and think about one other thing from a sporting perspective since we're talking about sports for as much racism as supposedly exists and and and, and stereotypes and discrimination all these things we're told about each and every day in sports and everywhere else in american society if you go to a soccer game in europe which is supposedly so much more enlightened than we are you are much more likely to hear racist chanting racist statements 
It's not uncommon for a black man to take the field at a soccer game in Europe and for fans to throw bananas onto the field. Now, can you ever imagine that happening anywhere at a United States football game? It would never happen. For all the grief that our society gives ourselves over race, when you take a step back and look at it on a worldwide level and look at it compared to our own past, we're pretty damn fantastic on the subject. We're doing a lot of good. So I think all this is overblown. I think it'll probably be a comedy of errors if they actually enforce it. But hey, I guess it'll be fun to watch. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next time.